Oh, God, it's in full screen. Okay, was not expecting that. <laughs> I must have, must have stretched this out uh, when I was playing with it for some other reason. But anyway, hi, <laughs> I'm the Space Quest Historian. Uh, that was quite fortuitous. I thought I was going to have to load in my background and then position this window slightly central-ish. Uh, oh, well, here we are. Good evening. I am the Space Quest Historian. That's that's me. C'est moi. Uh, first of all, uh, slight apology. I, I can sort of, I can sort of feel myself uh, coming down with something. So if I sound a little stuffed up and if my nose starts going a lot, which it will, then uh, my apologies. Uh, yeah. So feeling a little weird uh, this evening. When I was at PAX a couple of weeks ago, I went by. A booth whose name I have conveniently forgot. It's oh, it's on the back of these, right? Uh, they're called I Am Eight Bit, and they put out these lovely vinyl soundtracks of games. This is uh, Grim Fandango, and this is Doki Doki Literature Club. Don't ask. Anyway, um, these are very nice, and as as people who have watched this channel uh, for some time now, or just interacted with me on on the Discord, know I'm quite the vinyl enthusiast. Look at this thing. Look at this thing. By the way, you open this up. It's a little die cut, and you can change his facial expression. It's it's, it's lovely. It's madness. Oh, that is cool. I, I've listened to it once. This is all it does. But <laughs> 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 no, it is it is it is fantastic. Um, so of course I was thinking, why isn't Space Quests soundtracks available on vinyl? Because uh, Space Quests has phenomenal soundtrack. S plural, plural. They have phenomenal soundtracks, but. Um, the one soundtrack that I'm most infatuated with uh, for, well, personal reasons and just because it really is a fantastic soundtrack is Space Quest IV. Uh, it has some of the uh, some of the best music of the entire series, and it was composed by a man that I am very grateful to at least call a very good friend of mine. Uh, I might even be good friends with him. Yes, uh, it, <laughs> that sentence came out backwards. Anyway. Uh, it, it, Ken Allen. Ken Allen wrote most of the uh, music for Space Quest 4, and for the last couple of evenings, I've been sort of tinkering with a little idea that I had, which was to take 40 minutes of the best music there is in Space Quest 4, and then throw it on a website called Curates, or Crates, with a Q, dot com. Anyway, what you do there is you crowdfund vinyl records. So if you have a minimum of 100 pre-orders, then the vinyl goes into production. Um, so what I thought we'd do today is remaster or remix, I guess, the soundtrack for Space Quest 4 with the community, with all of you, and do it live as that infamous horrible monster shouted it and that wonderfully bizarre outtake. Well, do it live! Fuck it! Do it live! What does DAW stand for anyway? I've never actually worked that out. I've just heard people say Digital that. Digital Audio Workstation. Digital Audio Workstation. That's what it is. Yeah, okay. Now I know that. Uh, the one I have is called Mixcraft. Um, and you may be wondering, why would I use... Um, basically, it's because this is the one I have a legal license for. Try that again. Yeah, but now that sounds weird because it's coming through the wrong uh, audio device. So hang on, let's fix this. <laughs> My God, the fucking, um, <laughs> you wouldn't believe. Uh, let's see, playback device should not be Yeti speakers. It should be this thing. Don't ask me why, this is what Alexander set up for me. Okay, let's do this one more time. There we go. There we go. Ooh, that sounds nice. <laughs> DJ SQH in the place. Oh boy. <laughs> I mean, what's going on in track five and six there? What is going on indeed? Well, since since Mixcraft has no way of changing what instrument is being played on that track live. It just assigns them, like, at birth, I would say. It just assigns them mm. back here. It has no way of knowing what instruments uh, Ken wanted to play on this tune. And it gets even worse once we go down the line, because uh, you've got... 
And that's actually not too bad, except there's some weird bell thing going on, and whatever the fuck this is... That's actually not too bad either. What's this? Yeah. That's the monolith burger theme. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that one's a bit off. <laughs> it's a bit weird. <laughs> So, so that's that's so. What we need to do is basically tell Mixcraft uh, for each tune that we pick, we tell Mixcraft what piece of instrument, what instrument plays on each channel, and the channels don't change during the tune. Uh, the instrument doesn't change during the tune. One channel, one instrument. So this is pretty damn easy stuff, actually. And what comes out of it, hopefully, is a remixed soundtrack that uses the original game's original MIDI data. We haven't re-recorded anything, and we're not going to, on, hopefully, a vinyl. Vinyl release. If 100 people pre-order it, it's going to be on vinyl. So that's what we're doing. Excited? No one is. Yay. <laughs> hey, I'm excited. I'm excited, too. So now we just solo each track. So... It doesn't sound bad, but it's a little flat, isn't it? Well, let's pick... Uh, there's one called String Ensemble. Uh, nope. Uh, 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 uh. Oh, oh, strings. Let's just do strings fast. Let's just see what happens. Already an improvement. Ah, Sarah, yes, the volume. I'm, I'm actually adjusting the volume in OBS as we're doing this because it goes up and down. Uh, once we're actually done with this, I'll add uh, a mastering plugin to the, uh, to the final uh, mix, which will level out all the audio. It's already got a bit of reverb, but I just I just want to add a little bit more reverb just because that sounds a bit more cinematic. A bit more again. Da, da, da. I have no idea what I'm doing. I'm just messing with buttons. Too much. Too much. And we'll just reduce the thing a little bit. Yeah. Let's just say that's good for now. We'll again we'll can go back and, and tweak it once we fix all the other shit. For instance, I have no idea what's going on here, but it seems to be doubling some of the MIDI data that's coming from the string ensemble. Ah, it's the French horn! There's a much better French horn in here somewhere. There's a French horn ensemble, which I think is more like a stereo-wide ensemble. Never mix reverb on headphones. Human Interact is completely right. Bunch of, okay, a, a bit of a disclaimer. Um, what we're doing now is not the final mix. I will go back and I'll tweak some of this and I will listen to it on, on, on speakers, different speakers, and I will mix it so that it also sounds really good when it goes on speakers. And the final step is when you mix for vinyl, you also have to go in and, re and I think you have to reduce some of the frequencies that the, um, uh, the vinyl preamp will re-enter into the sound mix, something, something. There's an audacity patch that does this. So we yeah. will, yeah, sorry? Yeah, you got to work around the um, vinyl preemphasis. That's the one. So, so don't worry, don't worry. We will, we will do this right. What we're doing now is basically we're demoing. We're finding the right patches. We're finding the right sounds, and then we will perfect the mix. Perfecting the mix is really boring. This is the fun stuff. So, if you're bored now, you should probably go go away because <laughs> it's not going to get any more fun than this. Um, so yeah, so we're going to do all of that. You're absolutely right, uh, Alexander. Good. <laughs> that's, a, that's adorable. 
<laughs> Adorable little flute. Oh, oh, we're gonna let's give it a pan flute. See what happens. I know it's not a pan flute. Let's see. Oh shit. Oh, okay, this is a cork with. Uh, well, actually, it's a court with me. Uh, you see what, what what we did there? We just went into this track and we started picking something, and the sound didn't change. That's because I'm still messing with track four. You can see this thing Oops. is yeah. So I just alt, uh, it's just control Z like a motherfucker. We have to do this, and then. Oh man, I wanted to hear what track four sounded like on a on a pan flute. I will make that happen for you. <laughs> <laughs> Here we go. Let's just do that. <laughs> that's that's very spooky it's also a, like an octave too low perhaps two octaves too low for a pad flu really <laughs> <laughs> wouldn't be out of place in the Inca soundtrack <laughs> mm. <laughs> oh god that is a dude with a massive pan flute doing that <laughs> alright back to the french horns and let's do <laughs> Roger becomes a pan flute player. Um, I mean, it, it, it does sound fun. Let's try soloing it with the others. I think it might be a bit... Yeah, I think it's drawing too much attention to itself. It is, isn't it? It should just be a normal flute. Um, actually, the synth flute, I can't remember if it was two or three. They actually sound pretty good. Oh, I did it again, didn't I? Yeah, I did. Uh, undo. There we go. This is the one we want. A synth flute two. Whoops. <laughs> let me go let me go tend to those dogs. Woof woof. There you go. Alex, you wanted your dog box? There you go. <laughs> And it does have a very long reverb, but I think when you put them together... Oops, sorry, that's a bit much. Let's... No, it, you're right, it still draws too much attention to itself. Is there like just a standard flute? Let's try this one. That's more like it. playing the flute. Oh, and you'll notice I, I just panned it uh, right, just so it stands out a bit more, because if you have all your instruments in like the dead center, it's gonna get really messy in a hurry. The instrument track, this is gonna be a tricky one. Oh. I didn't know it started out with the uh, uh, Beethoven's fifth. <laughs> so is this just a timpani all the way through? It is. And this is just a timpani, which is good because I do believe there is a melodic timpani pitched. It's a bit low though. It shifted it down like three octaves. <laughs> it did, didn't it? I think this is what went wrong with uh, with uh, the format countdown. Why it got drowned out because it's it's just too uh, it's just too damn low, chief. So what we do is, and this does not count as re-recording, of course, is we go into the MIDI notation and we highlight the we highlight this stuff. All the way over here. And I think it's control arrow up. Let's see what happens. Well, that went up uh, a, a semitone. That's not what I wanted. <laughs> is it shift? Yeah, shift is an octave up. Here we go. How does this sound? That's a bit closer. Let's try it. Let's try another octave. See, oh shit, what did I just do? Try another octave. Nope, that's ridiculous. <laughs> it sounds like it was just one octave off. 
This might actually yeah, that's do gotta it. Be it. That's gotta be it. Let's try that together with these guys. Right, we're off. That that timpani will do, at least for now, definitely. Bass and lead, that's the one. Oh, this is gonna sound so, so awful. What is this? Bleep, 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 bleep. Well, you know what? It would be fun to try and pair this with... Uh, with a fast string. God, where'd you guys go? You're here somewhere. Uh, Dirty strings fast. <laughs> we are just, we're just messing this thing up for everyone. Everyone's childhood is ruined now. All right, well let's just for the fuck of it, let's try and play this with the rest of the uh, band. <laughs> New kid comes to school and messes up everyone's arrangements. It just sounds like somebody patched the wrong synthesizer in one of the <laughs> one of the channels. Yeah. But what would happen if some madman went in and took the octave down? This is definitely going in the right direction. <laughs> I mean, I've, I've been adjusting the volume slider a little because you definitely don't want this thing up front, but... Maybe I'm just getting really tired, but... <laughs> <laughs> it could, it could potentially, it could potentially work. Let's see what happens if we duplicate this and, and just say this one is the city stab thing. And just have this one be, I'm going to, I'm going to remove the uh, string part of this string thing. And I'm also going to take away the octave playing because that, I think, is what's killing it. Or at least somewhat maiming it. Hang on, can we have some more? There we go. So if we take away the top bit, uh, that would be this and all of this shite here, and pretty much all of that. I mean, that was borderline boring to watch, but... Yeah, I think we lost two viewers, but <laughs> we got in the end. Gemini's gonna have such a field day editing this. <laughs> it's 
it's gonna be like a four minute video and most of that is the introduction rants and then just <laughs> and here's the finished product <laughs> So, uh, what is this thing? It comes in here and there. It's a very short little bit. Ah, those are the bands. It's a glockenspiel. Oh, that is adorable. We must mess with it. <laughs> <laughs> that is barely audible. No, that needs to be more. Needs to be more. Let's do that. Oh no 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 no! This will, simply will not do. It it is that little twinkly sort of noise. Is there some twin fiddles? No. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. What have we got? What have we got? Uh, synth bells. Oh yes. Oh, splendid bells. Oh, what can go wrong here? Splendid. Oh, they are splendid. Oh, one thing I just re We might want to save this project, actually. We've been working on it for this long. We haven't saved once. Oh, boy. Uh, Mian theme. Main theme. Here we go. <laughs> so, what does a splendid bell sound like? Ooh. It does sound splendid. It does sound splendid. Can we sort of boost it somehow? Save early, save often. Absolutely right. Can we can we sort of crank this fucker up? Can we compress the hell out of it? Yeah, Sierra Games have taught us nothing. <laughs> Not even in the slightest. There we go. Pretty. We have we we have boosted it. Again, that was just a quick fix. I'll probably end up in a world of hurt with that later, but let's just pan that a bit to the left so it's noticeable once everything else starts playing, like, I'll just mark all of these guys. You know what? Instead of soloing all of these tracks, maybe I just, should just mute the ones we don't need, <laughs> which at this point is just three other tracks. Check this out. It's a bit loud, but... Better that it's loud than not noticeable at all. So the question is, is it too splendid? What's a shimmer bell? What's a synth chime? That mm, was a doorbell. That was a doorbell. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Gong gone wrong. Yeah, that was. <laughs> so <laughs> going. It is. What the fuck was that? Crystal. Let's do crystal. Wow, that's bright. That is bright. That might actually let's uh, let's let's uh, take the compressor away from it. So it's not right next to our faces. Sounds a bit closer to what I was imagining, to be honest. It actually needs to be more distant. Uh, maybe shove some more reverb on it. Sort of push it in the background a little bit. Yes? Did you have something to add? No, I was wrong. I was wrong. I accept that I was wrong. Here we go. What are you? And how can I fuck you up? What instrument would be doing that? You just it, came out of the bell track. It's weird. Yeah. At first I thought it was like a like one of those big tubular bells, like dong, but it's not. You wouldn't play on a tubular bell. <laughs> well, you would if you were weird. 
or Mike Oldfield, but uh, we are not. What if you're weird and Mike Oldfield? Let's find out. Uh, <laughs> Jimmy the Bell. Let's see what that what, what that does. Well, first of all, the octave is all wrong. That's that's that that just sounds so strange. Look for a program change before that in the MIDI. I don't know how. I don't think Mixcraft Im imports the uh, the the the, uh, the instrument changey uh, instructions in the tracks. It, it doesn't do that. That's why earlier when we listen to stuff that comes later down the line, it just sounds really really weird. So it, it doesn't read that. So we're 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 operating on guesswork here. Which is cool because yeah, the MIDI import seems to be a little strange. I mean, the fact that I put all the Sussex messages in their own channel, but then they just peach right off the one bar, yeah. Yeah. Um, so, so uh, w which is sort of a good thing in my book, actually, because that means we are working on our own mix. Because we have to guess what the uh, intended instrument is, we can put our own spin on it and just go, okay, in this case, we have no idea what the fuck it is. <laughs> So let, let's just put something else. Yes, forced reorchestration is what Mr. Gel is calling it, and I would concur. That is a very good, that's a very good name for it. Maybe an orchestra hit. That, that was just gonna sound so stupid. Oh, bring it back to the eighties. <laughs> that sounds doffed. Oh, that is just awful. <laughs> Make a maximum 80s version, change out to chill over one orchestra hit. <laughs> I have no idea what that was supposed to be. This one doesn't even play the triplets, it's just... It, oh, God. No, 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 we're not doing that. Maybe... Oh, you know what? Let's, okay, let's do something incredibly awful. Bring in the Tycho drums. Yeah, bring in the movie trailer drums. <laughs> what are you? Well, that was easy. Okay, <laughs> let's just find a good crash for this one. A car crash. <laughs> it's playing in my head. Why is, why is, why is there a car crash? Sam? Okay, fine. Let's do that. Right, right. Fuck it. Let's let's see how that sounds. <laughs> <laughs> oh god so many cars <laughs> oh Christ Chris for Michael Bay edition <laughs> oh. oh god Okay, okay, so if we change the timpani to a Tycho drum, then it is officially the Michael Bay version. <laughs> what have we done? <laughs> Enough of this travesty. <laughs> that's, that's a timpani now, and and this is going to be an actual crash symbol. Let's see what happens if we do the tuned one. Because he's got a bunch of shit going on over here. Oh, yeah, that 
gets its own channel as well. That's it, because that's the snare drum. There's a snare drum on this track, and that's the one that's buried on the. Uh, oh, so this is actually. Is there like an orchestra? Sorry. This must have been the old track 10. Yeah, this was the old track 10. So a drum kit, there's got to be an orchestral drum here. So yeah, there we go. Oh, nine inch drums. Oh, oh, I want to play with you sometime, but um, mm -mm. no, 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 let's stay focused. There we go. There we go. Bit loud, but we'll fix that. Fuck. You were supposed to be a crash symbol. Oh, there's one more track that we need. And that's the top one here. I have no idea what this is. Well, pretty integral, essential bit of sound, I feel. It's this little singular trumpet. A majesty trumpet. <laughs> Pray tell, what does a majesty trumpet sound like? Yes, I'm very sorry. I, I wrote a naughty word in the uh, search bar. I'll just complete it. There you go. That sounds very meaty. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> and not at all like King Graham's gonna come out of it. I, no. It's kind of a weird attack too, doesn't it? It sounds like it <laughs> almost swallows itself and then goes. Wah! All right. Ooh, Space Quest Four, the jazz version. Ah, <laughs> 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 oh, cheers, last of twenty three in the in the uh, in the chat. Thank you. Um, I am very happy that 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 you're here. Water the boy. Uh, came into this late. Are you making the soundtrack from scratch? No. Uh, glad you asked. I, I would love to reiterate this because this is very important. We are not uh, recreating, we're not re-recording anything. We're using the original MIDI data from the game as recorded by Tom Lewandowski. We're importing that in here and we're simply picking new musical patches, new instrument patches for each of the tracks. So it is the, the, the original soundtrack as recorded by Ken Allen. And this, is, this sounds so weird. I love this, but let's do a trumpet instead. Oh, Alexander has a good one. Hark back to the original sound and let the instruments flush in with new instrument. Wow. Yeah, crossfade from the um, OPL, <clears throat> um, oh. OPL version. Oh, interesting. However, the OPL will not run in the same BPM as what we're doing because we 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 yeah, ballpark the, the BPM. The tempo would be tricky. The the tempo is a bit tricky, but yes, we can use that as a promo. Maybe we can sort of finagle it and crossfade it a bit. Sorry, I'm gonna stay hydrated here. Hmm. It would be fun actually to record uh, the original. OPL3 soundtrack and oh yeah we could tempo stretch it that's true or we could just do a crossfade the opening is very sort of slowish ah uh, shit I got that soloed by the way well you could have this bit as the OPL3 So we need to do something with the uh, trumpet here because he needs a bit of reverb. He's a very lonely boy. And he needs more friends and the friends are going to be this kind of friend. Ooh, that, ooh, that makes all the difference. Oh, it does, doesn't it? Reverb makes all the difference. You heard it here first. And further down the line.
Okay, there's something a bit amiss. Listev, my first language is Danish. I, I know, it's weird, isn't it? Uh, but um, however you say nice to see you in French, just pretend I just said that. <laughs> I, I I never I didn't take French in in school sadly sorry Actually that might sound okay let's let's find out Did anyone hate that? Did anyone really like have a problem with that synth brassy thing right there? Seemed to fit for me. Mr. Gel says it sounded very 90s spacey synthy in the right way. Oh God, Listef said, okay, okay. I'm gonna butcher this. Stand back. Heureux de vous rencontrer. Was that close? Heureux de vous rencontrer. Anyway, that's how I feel. <laughs> okay, let's try this just, just for funsies. Let's try a different patch. See if this sounds any better. Eh, it's a bit too abrasive, isn't it? A stab. Let's just kind of just Julius Caesar, this motherfucker. Yeah. Perfect. Perfect. <laughs> Techno brass. Oh fuck yeah. Oh, rest in peace, headphone users. Very sorry about that. Totally worth it. <laughs> Because what it was doing, what it was doing to fuck is... Hello? You mean hello. Oh, hello, Alexander. <laughs> uh, I thought I heard an echo. Um, hi, how are you? Well, doing do pretty good, man. Yeah. First of all, <laughs> first of all, I want to commend you for doing all of this, all of this work right here. I, 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 you're making it sound like it's fun and that it's easy, but like, <laughs> this is, this is a lot of work that you're taking on to do entire soundtrack well, and and try to get a vinyl made someone else recorded it i'm just doing the fun stuff you know you no. this is this is this is uh this can take a long time especially re-instrumenting something because you're trying to trying to preserve what made the original special but still like you know give it some value so people are like okay uh, i gotta get this on vinyl uh, and then you get the vinyl and then you're like shit <laughs> <laughs> all right yeah that, that's that's the hope yeah cheers man thanks so much yeah. um there's a butt in there somewhere isn't there yeah what do you mean but i didn't, I didn't say but what oh it's just yeah my 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 anxiety just kicked in i'm coming out here to cheer you on man <laughs> cheers well if that's the case thank you so much i thought thought because because you actually uh if, if people don't know this alexander here uh, actually knows his way around audio engineering like a lot he did the audio mixing for the stream you are currently listening to uh and all the streams that i've been doing for the past i don't know how long uh pretty damn long <laughs> I want to say a year or something. Uh, so all the lovely compression and the ducking, you know, being able to hear the game and all of that shit, being able to hear everyone on the Discord and stuff like that. And that's all Alexander's job. Uh, so he did tremendously. My streams have never sounded better. Hello, Alex. And I'll step away from a minute and Alex shows up. Yeah. Hey, it's lit. <laughs> <laughs> so just a, um, um, a quick question for Alex. Um, would you like... Um, um, would you like the original AV guy for for Volition? What was your um, um, what was your original role in the company? Uh, so what I did for Volition was uh, a lot actually. So part of what I did was um, I, I I mean the title was video editor, but it, man, I did like so much more because <laughs> <laughs> like I, I was training I was training artists on like lenses and doing stuff like that and. I was also doing uh, trailers and cutscenes, and I was making game assets. And um, 
working with the team in terms of like, hey, how do we position this and everything? A little bit of everything. Very Jack good. of all trades. Yes. And then uh, I was like, I could do this on my own. And turns out it's even harder to do it on your own than when you've got 200 people around you that really know what they're doing. <laughs> yeah. But I did actually play your game. And yeah. that that video is recorded and i just need to edit it and it will come out next week if people don't know alexander released his first arcade game it's in vr arcades it's called starship commander here is the vr goggle headset that he graciously loaned me so i can play oh, that looks familiar. yeah so i can play the home edition and ruin it for everybody so actually, I think we're ready now, and and this this is the part where you stop speaking to me ever again. Oh, yeah. Because what I'm going to do now is very quickly, very dirtily, dirtily is a new word I have invented. Take me, take me to dinner. <laughs> <laughs> I will I will add uh, an isotope mastering plugin to the master track, which is going to sort of level everything out and make it a little more pu punchy and shit. But I am just going to. You know, choose a preset, just a built-in preset, just to, you know, see, you know, how it's going to sound. So, okay, all right, then I got to turn on the stream to listen to this, don't I? Uh, you well, either that or go on Parsec. Okay, okay, I'm going to turn on the stream then because my audio is set up to like route everything I hear back to into your guys. So that'll be fun. I'm going to just clip this here and uh, I'll take a listen. Cool. Take all right. Call off man. Thank you, sir. Well, thank you so much, dude. Uh, always a pleasure. All right, so with him gone, we can now no. Um, so this okay again. It's been a while since we've listened to it. So this is it without any mastering on it. Check this out. <laughs> I forgot we had that in there. <laughs> I'm keeping it. Might lower the volume on it, but yeah, we'll see. Okay, you get the picture, right? That's it without any mastering on it. So now... And and uh, if you're listening to this with headphones or if you're listening to it on speakers, you might want to turn it down a bit because it's going to get a bit louder, if not quite a lot louder, actually. It does have... Check this out. It has a it has two genres specific for classical music. Uh, I, I've played around with both of them for the other examples that I've done. And classical 2 sounds good, but it's not as loud as I would generally like it. Again, we are mastering for vinyl, so that might not be a big concern. But anyway, let's try this and see how it sounds. And also remember to activate it. There we go. It's very gentle, yes, uh, but... Yeah, yes, he's have widened the sound stage a bit as well. It has. And I'll try switching it off and on again so you can tell the difference. Exactly. It's doing a lot of treble boost too. It's brightening the sound a lot, and it is sort of it is widening the stereo sound as well. So I, I really like this this preset. It, I used it on the uh, shit. What did I use it on? Uh, the Professor Lloyd example that I posted on my Discord. So like, which we, that's the thing. You've been working on this for what, like two and a half hours now? Nah, just, and you're just like, one and a half hours. So like tomorrow, what you'll probably want to do, like if you keep working on this one is you'll um, start automating things and start bringing volumes in and there. That way you can accentuate certain volumes of stuff. Yeah, maybe. Or I'll just be lazy and just 
put things on different tracks if I want to louder or softer. Yeah, you just do nine inch drums. It'll be great. Yeah, nine inch drums will work. <laughs> the whole thing is like, hey, this this got a little avant garde here, okay? <laughs> <laughs> so so okay, so um, briefly, I just wanted to share the other ones that I've been working on, uh, keeping now in mind that our preferred. Mastering patch is sorry, just knock the microphone. Mastering patch is the um, symphonic number two with three decibel more volume, I guess. So let's do Professor Lloyd, which is uh, if you don't remember, you go down the uh, <laughs> Joseph says, just take out the Mark Siebert shit already. I have no idea what you're talking about. But anyway, this is when you go down the uh, sewers and you click the button. Ah, a button. Perhaps I'll give it a press. And again, I really, really want to do stuff to, especially the tubular bell, the famous hellish bell that plays in this uh, track. But okay, check this out. That bit annoys me, by the way. There's like some dissonance going on in the bottom end. Like this is gonna come down to some interpretation though. Yeah, the bell thing. I'm tempted to somehow just sample the original Sound Blaster bell, which is kind of I mean you can't replicate that shit. Do it. Like that's that's what I say, man. Like if it's if the original sounds good, do it. Because like a lot of these remixes, a lot of times they'll just like intentionally like i gotta change everything because it's a remix it's like no man if the old one's there do it like i would prefer that you keep more of the old that's just like my personal preference whenever i listen to these types hmm. of albums you know i mean you do have a point the only thing is i don't know how to sample the original from the opl3 i don't know how to isolate it because it is buried behind all the other stuff and i don't have like a I... it's a midi file so you can rip the tracks out and then just run it through an OPL3 emulator. Unless you like want the clicks and stuff. Well, no, it, luckily it is just a percussive thing. So it's, if it's just a wave sample of that hellish bell, I'll just stick it in whenever it, it needs to be there. But I don't have an OPL3. I, I don't think I have an OPL3 emulator. I mean, I have AdLib Tracker. They're built into everything. They're, they're built into everything, man. I know they're built into... Uh, DOSBox has has one. Yeah, I'm, I wouldn't be surprised if there's not a um, an OPL3 emulator like as a VST plugin. There are OPL, um, OPL VSTs here, but I'm guessing they aren't free. I might be. No, I've, I've, I've actually found a free OPL3 uh, VST. It was, it sounded the part, but it was detuned. It was like awfully detuned. You can, if, if you're going to put stuff in, then you could just, um, you, you would have to retune uh, the, the OPL3. Anyway, anyway, AdLib Tracker 3, if you, if you just want original AdLib sounding or, or Sound Blaster OPL3 sounding stuff, then you can just do it in AdLib Tracker 2, export that as a wave, and then just use those as samples. But um, Ken did something really, really strange with the ad-lib bells in the OPL3 version of this tune. And I have, I fear if I just take the... First of all, I wouldn't know how to get the actual 
uh, MIDI file out from the game. I know there's SCI viewer or something like that. Um, thanks, Waterboy, uh, for, for uh, Water the Boy, for, uh, for being here, by the way. Yes, go entertain your child. You have done very well, sir. Thank you for joining us. Um, I, 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 someone smarter than me would have to uh, isolate that sample, is what I'm saying, because that would take forever for me. Okay, a couple of questions in the chat here. Bud Spencer says, have you already had discussions on the cover art for the vinyl release? I collect vinyl soundtracks and the album art is essential. I completely agree with that last sentence. Absolutely. I have not had any discussions about the uh, cover art. Um, there are two ways this could, this could go, really. Uh, someone could offer to paint a lovely picture for the cover art and we could use that. The alternative is that uh, Brandon Bloom did, let's see if I can find them. Brandon Bloom did, oh, there you go. <laughs> I spelled that wrong. Brandon Bloom did these fantastic upscales of graphics from uh, Space Quest IV. These are from the original game, but then they went through this AI filter, whatever the fuck it is, and, and just upscaled the graphics. There's some um, King's Quest thrown in for no good goddamn reason. Uh, there are some more space quests images coming up. God damn it, King's Quest, get out of my stream. There we go. There's some Space Quest 5 stuff. Uh, but there's and there's some Space Quest 1 VGA. We don't talk about that. And what there was some more supercomputer stuff. And Magnetius Bar. So so what we could do is also use some of these uh AI upscaled uh, maybe just put them on the back cover as like screenshots, but but beautified screenshots. I don't know. Um, so, long story short, no, I have not talked to anyone about the uh, uh, about the artwork. But you're absolutely right; it is essential. I think if you want to keep that discussion going, please join my Discord. I should probably put a link to that in actually. But anyway, uh, next Sunday is is October thirteenth. We're doing the Space Quest Olympics, so sorry, we will not be doing this next next Sunday. Very sorry about that. Um, might do it again on the 20th uh, because and, and, uh, one of the reasons why I'm a little reticent to start a new game series, although that was one of the options on, on the poll and I would have done it, but I'm a little reticent because this office that I'm sitting in currently is going to get converted into a nursery very, very soon. If not this month, then at the start of next month. So, so uh, there's going to be a week or a weekend or something like that where I'm just not able to record and stream and whatever. So there, there would be a gap there somewhere anyway. So we might do this again on the 20th. Let us see. I sort of tried to promise that this wouldn't be as boring as it kind of got there in the middle, but then we pulled it together and we actually got something cool sounding out of it. And I want to desperately thank uh, Pickle Dog and Alexander in, in the uh, voice chat for, uh, you know, helping us out picking the right instruments and all that and of course everyone in the uh, text chat for uh, you know seemingly having a good time and uh, chiming in and all that so hey that's like i guess like one or two percent of the 100 pre-orders that we're gonna need to get this thing printed on a nice bit of vinyl which would be fun so once we get all this shit together and uh, off to QRates.com we go, and um, then we crowdfund a final release. And then it's off to tell your friends, because we need a hundred... There's a time limit too, by the way. Once we hit that crowdfund button, I think we have like a month or two months or something to get those hundred pre-orders in. So it's a spam your friends kind of deal, but... You better let's be... get adventure gamers to write about it. Oh yeah, exactly. I just want to make it very, very clear that this will be a non-profit thing. We're not... No one's going to make any money off of this. And it is also very distinct from the Ken Allen soundtrack, the Under the Half Dome thing that he kickstarted. This is not that project at all. That's that's something we're going to be very, uh, going to have to be very upfront with once we start the uh, crowdfunding process. Is still watching? There are still twenty five people. Let's see. Because uh, wait, wait, oh, oh. there we go. Refresh. Refreshed. Refresh. If anyone is still, uh, Restream says there are still 25 people watching. Um, my friend Gemini is having some fun with Mario on his Super Nintendo. I think he's playing Yoshi's Island. Uh, no, he's playing Super he Mario indeed. World 2 Yoshi. Yeah, he is playing Yoshi's Island. Raid. So. Raid. 
Great. Yeah, so let's let's go and raid him, shall we? Uh, Space Quest is... Because he's going to have to edit this together into one cohesive little... <laughs> Not going to fucking happen, is it? So, let's raid Gemini Dust Games. Here we go. Two viewers already, four viewers already, five, six... What are we saying when we get in there? What are we saying? What are we saying? We just say, have fun editing this, fucker. I mean, uh, <laughs> <laughs> and all right, all right. 11 people are ready. Let's raid. Off we scoot. Yes. <laughs> okay, here we go. Here we go. Desktop. All right, I just told him have fun. Had any of this fucker. <laughs> 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 He's like totally. Hold on. <laughs> Fun editor. <laughs> <laughs> never mind. I'm still gonna play this. Because I'm still gonna play this. Oh, sorry, is that is that that's feeding through, isn't it? Oh no, I'm out. Why didn't it show up? Why didn't it show up? Yes, it is. Nope. No, no. I don't know it if it's coming true. <laughs> oh, oh, right, yours. Is. Hello. Huh. I'm kind of worried that it didn't play with any sound, but oh, well, oh there's sound. There was sound. We arrive with greetings and more work for you. <laughs> Joy on both. <laughs> ah, well, I'm not too worried about the sound. At least the animation worked. <laughs>